Hi, Gay DeRusso with the Majestic Rider. So today I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about gated horses. I've already shown you the different breeds and I've shown you the different kinds of gates that these horses can do. But what some of people do not understand and even some trainers that might be helping you is that some of these horses are gated better than the other horses. The horses that are gated very well are usually easier to train and easier to get them to gate. You just have to go the correct speed. But some of these horses that are gated very well were bred very well. And even if you go really fast, they just gate. They don't trot, they don't pace. When they're loose in the field, they just gate and that's all they do. Now, some of you might not understand that that is hard to get. These horses used to be bred very well and they were bred for the gait and they were usually bred for a certain purpose. But as these horses have now turned more into pleasure horses instead of transportation, things have changed a little bit. So let me talk a little bit about what they were bred for and uh, why you might be having some issues with your horse. So let's first talk about the Tennessee walking horse. The Tennessee walking horse was bred to go in plantations. That's why you'll hear about a plantation horse. They were bred to go through fields, which usually don't have a lot of rocks and don't have um, steep terrain. They did have rolling hills. And these horses were bred to be worked all day around usually the plantations around the farms. So these horses usually have a pretty good endurance level. So that means they have some energy uh, they were bred for endurance, so they keep their feet lower to the ground. Less energy if you do not pick your feet up higher. So they usually carry their feet a little bit low to the ground. And then they have a very long stride, at, which lets you glide across the ground and gives you a very smooth ride. Now, these horses say you want a Tennessee walking horse. If it was bred very well, it should gate pretty easily. You should just be able to control the speed. But as things have changed in time, they are bred for different things. Okay? So if you're looking for a trail horse and you have flat areas that you're riding on and you have some rolling hills, these horses do quite well. If it's very steep terrain because they have that big stride, it makes it much harder on that horse to be able to do that. If you have lots of rocks all over the place because these horses reach out so far with their legs, they can have issues getting over those rocks and they can be a little bit more stumbly. Now, they're also, even though they have endurance, some of them have been bred very calmly and that's why people like them. They're funny, they're entertaining, but they can also be on the lazier side. So if you have a lazy horse that you're riding over rocks and you're not a good rider, this might not be a good fit for you. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the Tennessee walking horses, and you can always skip forward if you wanna hear about the other horses. But So, with the Tennessee walking horse, as their popularity gained, they began, of course, to show them. As they showed them, it got a little bit different on what they were looking for, and they were looking for action in their legs and their legs picking up higher. So some of them did put some breeding into them, more of the trotty side, which helps the horses lift up higher. Some of them wanted to do it with the action devices and they bred their horses pacier. When they breed them pacey and then you put those uh, devices on them like a heavy shoe or you put a chain on them, the horses lift their legs differently and they would actually gait. They would do a flat walk and a running walk. But if you put those action devices or heavy shoes on a horse that was bred on the trotty side, then you will make the horse more trotty. So there are a lot of pacey horses out there and some of them were bred to be pacey. And you're thinking, why would they breed them to be pacey? They bred them to be pacey because they were bred for the show ring and they were bred to have a heavier shoe on their foot so they could do that correct gait. So as you're looking at all these horses, a lot of people are just looking how pretty they are and how they're moving and they're kind of paying attention to the video, but not that much. Um, you're looking for certain things of where you're riding, what terrain you're riding on, are you gonna go fast or are you gonna go slow, who you're riding with, and you're trying to match what you need with kind of what you want. <laughs> 
but it's matchmaking to get the right horse. And the hard thing is what you want is not always what you need. So I always tell people, get what you need, okay? Get something safe, get something that's gated pretty well, especially if you have no help, okay? So that's the Tennessee walking horse. Now you have the, uh, I'm gonna group a, come, a couple of them together. So I'm gonna put the Rockies and the Missouri Fox Trotters more together. They have a shorter stride, they're bred to go over steeper terrain, so lots of rocks, and that's why they're bred to have that shorter stride because they're gonna pick their feet up more often, less likely to hit those rocks. Okay? And when they're bred, again, if these horses are bred really well, you'll see that they gate when they're loose. Now, each horse is different depending on the breeding and how good the breeder was and what they mix the horses with, you know, what the mare had going for it and what the stallion had going for it. So good breeders breed for temperament, but they also will breed for gait. Color, I think, is last, but a lot of people now are breeding for color. So you get a good temperament and you get a horse that's well gated and it will be easy to train because you just have to control the speeds. So some trainers who say, oh yeah, I've ridden gated horses before, it's not a big deal. They might have ridden horses that were gated really well, so it was easy for them to get the gate. But because not all these horses were bred well, again, those horses with that shorter stride are bred to do more mountainous uh, terrain. But now, because of the show ring and other things, they have bred them differently and they've bred them more for color. So now you have some horses that don't gate when they're loose. They just trot or they just pace or some trot and some pace and some gait. It just depends. But a horse that's bred really, really well will just gate. Okay. Now, with the Rockies and the Fox Trotters, because their step is shorter, they will usually clear more of the rocks. Now, a horse that is more on the trotty side, like a Fox Trotter who can Fox Trot, usually will pick its feet up higher because when they trot, they pick their feet up. Now, they might not have as much endurance as a horse that keeps its feet lower to the ground. But as you're looking at these horses, you are thinking, well, I have steep terrain. Do I want it to have more endurance or do I want it to be less trippy? Any horse can trip. Every person trips and people forget that. So any horse can trip. But if you're really trying to get one that doesn't trip, you got to ride it. That's first of all, and see how it moves. You have to uh, see if it's sure footed when you ride it on those trails and if it pays attention. Again, if it's lazy and it doesn't pay attention, it's probably going to trip more often, even if it's a fox trot or a rocky. All of them can trip. But the more lazy the horse is, the more likely it will drag its feet and the more likely it will trip. Now, again, if you've got a horse that they're breeding for the show arena because they want it to snap its knees up real high, then again, it's bred more likely to have a heavy shoe on and those horses more than likely will be more on the pacey side. Because again, if you put heavy shoes on the front to get that action, and it's on the trotty side, it will make the horse more trotty. Okay. So as horses were bred and these gated horses got more popular, the ones that sold for a lot of money were the pretty ones and the ones with color. So what do you think happened? They stopped breeding so much. Well, the people were trying to get money, money started breeding for color and they didn't care as much about the temperament and they didn't care about as much for the gate because the people buying them weren't paying attention. So then they started breeding for color and they breeded some recessive genes into certain horses. So even though you got color, you could have issues with their eyes or their tendons and other things. So also as they're breeding for smoothness, if they bred them too much, because a lot of times, you know, they get that spring in their pasterns. So, the horses that can sometimes be ultra smooth are the ones that come down way in their pasterns. But over time, they can have issues with that, those pasterns. And I've talked to that, about that in another video, which you can watch. So now that things have changed over the years, we have horses that gate very well and they just gate, gate, gate. And you're like, oh my God, these are the best horses. Why wouldn't you want a gated horse? But then there are ones that are not bred so well and they're pacey and that's uncomfortable. And then there's ones that just trot and people see them in the field just trotting and they go, well, that's not a gated horse, it's just trotting. It is, it has the trotting 
um, it trots when it's loose, but it can still gait if you ride it correctly. The same with the pacey horse. It paces when it's loose, but it can still gait if you train it correctly. And you have horses that will switch back and forth. So if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have any gated trainers around you, but you have some trainers that say, oh yeah, I've ridden gated horse in the past, it's a piece of cake. You bet it's best to get a horse with a good temperament get it for what you need on the trail if it's steeper terrain or more rolling and then get it for its gait okay i always tell people when i'm evaluating videos for them like this horse is pacey if you don't have anyone to help you this could be an issue like it's pacey so it's not easy to train a gated horse if you've never trained one before and especially one that didn't gate well you have a long road ahead of you and sometimes people are buying babies and other horses and sending it to different trainers. That's okay, but if you don't have a good gated trainer by you, then it's better to buy a horse that already gates well, somebody has already trained it and put that extra money in it because it's better to spend fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000, get the horse you want, then go cheaper and then try to make a horse into what you want. It takes many, many years. It can take many accidents and then sometimes it still will not gate the way you were expecting it to gait. So you wanna take your time looking and try to get what you can ride now. I always tell people, don't get what you can ride in five years because in five years you could have an illness or something else and you might not be able to ride. Enjoy it now, just take that money because again, you're gonna spend much more money if it does not gait well or it's not trained. So if your horse just trots or if it just paces, uh, can it gait? Yes, they can. So do not let that panic you when you're watching them loose. But it can be harder to get them to gait. You have to know what to do. So if you're getting one of these horses, it's best to make sure a gated trainer is by you. The first gated horse I got, because I didn't have a lot of money, it did not gait. You know what it did? It just trotted. So yes, I did get it to gate, but if I had more money, I would have bought one that just gate, <laughs> and then I probably wouldn't be here making this video for you. So it all worked out in the end, but it was a long road to teach that horse to gate and to hold its gait because it was 11 years old and the people who had it before me didn't gate it. They just ran it and they just trotted it. So it did not have any idea how to gate. So if you have a gated trainer and it's a good gated trainer, uh, they can do it naturally. They can get a pacing horse or a trotting horse to gait. Now each trainer is different and some will use action devices like chains or weights on their feet or angles in their feet and have feet longer in one area, like in the front or feet longer in the back, depending what the horse does. Even when you buy the horses, they might have that when they come. So when you change those angles, when you change those shoes, then the horse will not move the same. So you have to know that when you get that horse. If it has long feet, it might have long feet for a reason. If that trainer, you know, it, they showed the horse and the horse was shown in classes with a heavy shoe and now, you know, they're done showing, a lot of those horses get sold as trail horses. What you need to know is if you tried it when it had a heavy shoe on, it could go much faster before it would pace or it would trot. But when that heavy shoe comes off, that horse is going to be slower. And you're like, what, why? Well, the heavy shoe helped that horse to gait. So what normally was a pace, when you put a heavy shoe on the front feet, it changes the timing. It changes when that foot will hit the ground. And so it gives it separation from the back leg and the front leg. So a pace is when, you know, the legs move together like that. So if you put a heavy shoe on the front, what'll happen is the legs will come off the ground together like a step pace, and then the back leg lands and the front leg lands. So it separated the legs. And the horses can pace much faster than they can gait if it's not a super well-bred gated horse, okay? So again, really well-gated horses can gait pretty darn fast, but you know, they're rare nowadays. <laughs> the um, ones that, you know, pace, horses can pace up to 30 miles per hour. They can pace really fast. So if you rode that horse and it had a heavy shoe on and you went pretty darn fast, you have to know that that's not the speed you're gonna go 
to keep that horse in gait when you take that shoe off. You're gonna have to go slower and you might even have to retrain it some because it was used to doing that pace and it was the shoe that separated the leg. It wasn't the horse doing it, it was just the timing, okay? So it can be very, very confusing with all of this. And when people say it, they're naturally gated, they are, they can gate when they're loose. It, the difference is some just gate all the time when they're loose and some gait two or three steps when they're loose and then pace or trot or do both of those. So depending what you bought, depending how it has been trained will depend on how you need to ride it. And that's very important to know because again, they can be trotty or they can be pacey. And if you ride them correctly, you'll get the gait. But if you don't know how to ride them correctly, even if the trainer had them gating really well, they may not gait well because most people are going too fast. And when you take them to other trainers, they do not under, always understand the speeds those horses need to go. So the ones that just gait, they can usually go the speed of a trot. But the horses that have some trot or pace in them, they usually need to go slower to have the, you know, their fox trot or their running walk or their uh, like saddle rack or saddle gate, same thing. Um, they need to go slower. When they rack, they go faster, but sometimes they really gotta bring their heads up or down to get them into that gate. And not a lot of people know how difficult it can be. So when you're looking at horses, look at how they, that's why I always say in my videos, this one paces when it's loose. This one trots when it's loose, because I'm trying to educate you that not all of them just gait when they're loose. Okay? So you have to know that, and I like to see horses when I'm evaluating, like see what they do when they're loose, because you can tell a lot more. If it just gates and all, all it does is gait, that's gonna be pretty easy to get under saddle. But if it trots or it paces, that's gonna be much harder to get it to gate under saddle, although it's possible, but you will most likely need help. And it's much better if you get help in the beginning versus you ride the horse for five years and you trot it or you pace it and you go, what? You know what, I'm gonna take it to a trainer now and try to get it to gait. Well, it has five years of using those other muscles. So instead of using the muscles that help it to gait, it's been using the muscles to trot or to pace. And lately I've seen a lot of horses for some reason, uh, people must be tying their heads down that come and they uh, pace with their head down. And that's even harder to fix. So now you can't use their head, you know, lifting it higher or lower to help you to get the gait because they've, uh, they've taken some of those tools away from us because they've tied their head down. So there's many different things that will come up and a lot of people need help. They're just afraid to ask for it. But again, there's a lot of us online that can help you now. Just know you have to ask someone who really, if you wanna do it naturally, you have to know someone who can get it naturally. You'll hear lots of people saying, just put a heavy shoe on it, put some chains on it, do this, change their angles. Those are quick fixes and those are okay if that's all you have. I think it's better to put a little heavier shoe on it than to pace the rest of its life if you have no help. But I always try to do it naturally if we can, okay? And I don't put heavy shoes on them, so don't, let, don't think I do. Um, but Again, I'm just trying to help people who sometimes don't have anybody else to help them. So just know in time you can get them to gait, but it's a long road and it's a hard road if that horse is on the trotty or the pacey side, no matter what breed it is. But just remember years ago, you know, when you read all the stuff about these horses, they were true, they were calm, they gated well, but it's not true anymore because now when you read those things about horses and they go, oh, I'm getting a Rocky because I heard they're the calmest ones. And I'm like, not anymore. Because a lot of them were bred for the show ring and I've seen pretty hot ones. I've seen pretty hot walking horses. I've seen hot fox trotters. So not all of them are calm anymore because they were bred for different things. So if you can look back in the breeding line, that might give you an idea. But if you see it was showing and every single horse on that breeding line was shown then again, you might have a little bit of a hotter horse or it might be more of a pacey horse. So just know that going in. Okay, I wanna show you this horse because he was bred well, but then he was also shown and he was trained well. So in here, I don't have him in the surcingle or anything. I 
and get him to go faster, but he just gates. I'm still using the poles because I want him to pick his feet up a little bit more on the trail. Let's see, he's got head shake. He's Head shake, he's got a natural gait. He doesn't trot. He occasionally paces, but it's rare. He's got a nice big stride, but he doesn't have that camel walk. Nice sweet horse with good attitude and a pretty good work ethic. So I'm showing you this because some of you, you know, are looking at those show horse gates. And you're trying to get it and you have a horse that wasn't bred well a horse that wasn't trained well and maybe the people who had it before you had no idea and so they even messed it up more and then you're wondering why your horse won't gate like this so there's many factors that come into play one is good breeding you know if it's good breeding and you got the right amount of the mare and the right amount of the stallion you're gonna get a good gait, you're gonna get a good temperament, and you're gonna get a willing horse if the people bred it well. But if it was bred for color, not for temperament, or it was bred for color and not for gait, then, you know, your horse might not gait as well as ones like this. So, same thing, if you have a horse that's bred well, but you don't have a good trainer, our trainer doesn't understand gait horses, they can make a well-bred horse start pacing or trotting. So that's the second that part that comes in. And when you start them off, the better you start them when they are two or three years old, you don't have to be in the saddle, but on the ground. The better you start them in their gait, the better they're gonna gait. But if you start them wrong, and you got them pacing or trotting, and that's their single, you know, then that's what they're gonna learn. That's what they're going to remember. That's what they're going to think they're going to do. So that's the second part is the training. And then third is the rider. Because be, even if it's bred well and trained well, if you ride it too fast or wrong or on a big floppy rein on one of these walking horses, well, then you can make it lazy, trippy, and, you know, possibly pacey. Or if it has any trot in it, it could go into trot. So that's just to show you when they're bred well and trained well it's easy to get their gait that's why a lot of trainers think oh yeah i ride gated horses it's easy i don't know what you're talking about because they probably had one like this and all you did was just go faster but if you have a good gated trainer even if they trot or pace they'll be able to make it better okay not everyone's got the perfect horse most of us don't it would be nice if we did but because they messed up the breeding some and people have gone for color and looks. Some of the things they used to breed for are not there so much anymore. Okay, so now we're gonna go the other way. So I already flat walked him. I didn't stick him in a surcingle or anything. That's his flat walk. And he just does it pretty naturally. And that's more towards his running walk. And look, he's even got a nice canner in there. He's like, yeah, because everything was natural for me. See that rocking horse canter? So he had the talent, the confirmation, he got the breeding, and then he got the right people to train him and work with him. So it was much easier for him. Okay? So I want you to remember that when you're looking at horses, you know, if it's bred well and it's got a fair amount of training on it, it's going to cost more. But in the end, is it worth it? I think so. I think so to make it easier for you so you're not frustrated. But again, you get one like this, it's much easier. You just get on and you just you just go the right speed and the horse does the gate and you frame it up a little bit or collect it just a little, not a lot. And then you're gonna get the nice gate. Now he's tripping here, but this 
arena is all uneven. I know you can't see it, but we have no footing. And then there's little drop-offs and stuff. He's a little cheater. So there he just got pacey, but that's the first time and it's going downhill. So see how much he can rock back on his hocks and it's just easy for him. So it's just like people. Some people are born very athletic and most everything comes easy to them. And some of us are not as athletic like myself, but if you work hard, so you train them. Well, if you work hard, you can still get that good gait out of them. Okay, same thing with, with if you're a rider, even if you're not naturally athletic. Oh, look at that canter. <laughs> um, you can become a great rider with persistence, patience, and repetition. But you have to keep doing it. So it's the same thing with their gait. Even the pacey and the trotty horses can end up with beautiful gait if you're consistent and you have the right timing or you have a trainer that can help you with that. But if you don't, that's when it becomes very hard. So I just wanted to do this because I know a lot of people get these horses in there and there's a harem going, it just trots when it's loose or it just paces. That's because of the breeding. So that means when they cross those horses, that mare and the dam, whichever one was more pacey, that's what that horse got, okay? So, but it doesn't mean it's a bad horse. It doesn't mean it can't do it. It's just gonna be a little bit harder for him. Okay? But you see, he see he hits the poles and stuff sometimes because he naturally heated, so he drags his feet some, but those trotty ones don't usually hit the poles. So there's good and bad things about it. But just pointing out why it's so easy for some of these horses or some of your friends just go, I don't get it. You just go faster and the gate's right there. Well, it might be for their horse, but that doesn't mean it's there for your horse, okay? So this is another one. He was a champion, I think, when he was a four-year-old in the show ring. No, but he was shown with a heavier shoe and they kind of, um, if we look back at his video, I'll see if I can find his video. It looks like he's gating, but it's actually the shoes. So if you watch his legs, he's as they're going faster, he's actually really pacing. But because of the heavy shoe, it is making him gate. But if you watch the legs coming off the ground, you'd see if he didn't have that shoe on, he'd otherwise be pacing. And again. And some of these guys were bred to be pacey because they were planning to put heavy shoes on him and compete with them. And if you do that with a trotty horse, they start trotting more. Oh, he's got to do something. So this horse, he had a pretty good start, even though, you know, he was a little bit pacey. And then I got a hold of him when he was four years old, trained him to gait naturally. And then the owner took him and then she worked with a natural horsemanship trainer and they told her to ride him on a very loose rein and he ended up pacing okay so that's one that was bred somewhat decently has a little bit of natural gait but otherwise is more on the pacey side if he goes faster but then had some training that even though he had gated well when i had him and he turned into being pacey okay so now you know it's coming back but he can revert if he's not working to going back to that pace and he, he's much better than he was but still it all affects them so him i usually put in a sur single when i work in here because as i make him go faster there he goes he starts pacing okay where that other horse really didn't pace that much so this guy when i do make him go faster I usually use that sur single on him so I can control the speed or lead rope.
so I can control him a little bit more. Otherwise he tends to pace. Okay. But he's a good horse uh, because he was a show horse. He does have a little energy to him at times. He's calm, but sometimes he's also a little bit spunky. He goes back and forth, so just depends. Okay, and you'll see his canter's okay, but it's not as nice as that other horse's canter, and now he's pacing. So again, if you get one like this, and uh, you're not with a good gated trainer, or they're riding him with too low a head, or loose rein, or not collected, again, then he's going to tend to pace. And that's the hard part because if you don't know what's right the trainer's not used to gated horses you know they just train how they train their quarter horses or their other horses but these guys are totally different so there his gait was pretty good his, with his head was a little bit higher he engaged himself much more and had uh, more of a head shake okay so i think if this horse was ridden correctly um since he was a four-year-old his gates would have been phenomenal now but you know things happen and uh you know even though I trained him it was as a four-year-old and now he's 15 so he had many years of pacing I wanted to say this uh too so uh these gated horses can pace and trot faster than they do their gates okay horse can pace at 30 miles per hour so when you see the horses shown and they have heavy shoes on either in the front or the back to help them to gait, those horses, when you're watching them, are going to go faster than your horse is going to go naturally. Not all, but most. Because, again, they're only doing the gait because they have a heavy shoe on. They otherwise are trotting or pacing, and that's a, usually a faster gait. So if you're doing a running walk, that's not going to be as fast as what your horse can pace if your horse is on the pacey side. So a lot of the problems I see is that people are riding too fast and they're riding a fast speed like this where it's a pace instead of going slower and getting the correct footfall. Because who wants to go slow? Nobody wants to go slow anymore. But they see? But the, see, he just had a good gait, and now he got faster, and now he's pacing. Pacing. So, just remember, when you're watching this stuff in the show ring, and then you go out and you ride your trail horse, and you think, well, they were going this speed. This is how fast I'm supposed to go. Remember, when you go that fast, your horse paces or trots where there's this gating. And it might be because there's has better training, but it also might be because they have heavier shoes. So just remember that the gates usually are not as fast as people think. People always want to go faster. They always want to push the horse to the limit. And that's when they even have a good gated horse. They start pushing them out of gate or the horse starts getting too tired. And then they pace or trot. So there's lots of reason. There was a good day. Yeah. And that uh, was okay canter step. But again, some have more talent than the others. And even this one could have been spectacular if he was trained correctly for those past 10 years. He, he might never have paced much at all. But, but he does because he got a little mixed up in between. Okay. So remember, it's breeding training, and then the riding. All of those are taken into consideration when you're trying to get a good gated horse.